Hallelujah. Greetings in the precious name of Yoshua Hamashiach. Your grants unto us the stability of strength. In the only way that comes by the assurance of Torah. We understand the disciplines of our Abba. And as we began to grow and mature in the disciplines of Yah, we began to see the greatness and the magnitude of our strength. We began to realize the greatness of His strength. Then we can begin to understand the importance of our strength and our confidence through Yahshua HaMashiach. For there is no other way it's going to come. There is no other name whereby it's given unto man, whereby they must be your shach. Delivered, made free, and set apart to offer unto him that which is pleasing in his sight. The offerings of Toda with great pleasure from the heart of his nation. And if that doesn't resonate from his nation, his people, I'm not going to say excuse my vernacular. We don't have a damn thing. And that's just the honest truth. I'm going to teach today. I feel like the weather. I don't feel gloomy or anything, but it seems like it is a very reserved day today. A day where you want some hot turkey wing or turkey neck soup over some rice a piece of cornbread with maybe some biscuit glass of iced tea with some of the tremendous wonderful vegetables in that and simply eats and rests and so we shall rest in the lechem the meat offering Yoshua HaMashiach this Shabbat I want to say this and preface this before I began teaching. I am often accused of many things. I am inconsiderate, uncompassionate. I never speak the words of encouragement. And there's one thing about me. I'm a student of Torah. When I tell you that, I mean that. I'm a student. Torah. When I die, I will still be a student. And a student is one that is egotistic to learn, to comprehend, to access, to enter into the depths and revelation of the power of the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. And so as we proceed from that plateau, then we began to walk in a self-grandizing nature, thinking that we possess and have. And then our fruitile understanding of matters become conceited. And with that conceit, which is the mirama, becomes a treachery mindset that operates in a spirit that is far from Torah. And so we must always, as the Torah uses the words, lomads, we must be taught. And the teaching of Torah begins with one principle. It is the discipline. It is the correction. It is the revealing of one's own nature, one's own heart, one's own mindset. So I am accused of not encouraging people and speaking from a perch of encouraging them and words of encouraging. I'll give you a scenario. It's like one that has been chastised, rebuked, repudiated, corrected. 
And then those that do not understand the beauty of Yah, they will assist them in their own corruption. And never reveal unto them the importance of the knowledge of their own sin. And David said of his enemies and the enemies of the stake of Torah, he says they are always encouraging themselves in an evil matter. What matters to them? What they believe is important to them. And so I am one that the old ones would say that it is the early bird that gains the reward, gets the worm. But of course, the one you see in the later of the day, that doesn't mean that it was not up early. And so I'm always assessing Torah. What I say assess, I'm digging into the annals, especially words. So I said, yeah, I, I want to see, as many will say, quote, we need encouragement. So I said to Yah, I want to see how many times in Torah is the word encourage, encouraging, encouragement, encourage. Of course, those that have no spiritual intellectualism, and their agenda is only to prove who they are. I'm here to prove who he is. I defend this. I don't give a damn about this. I care about this. So you would think that numerically the words, there is just a preponderance of repetitiveness. To encourage. And of course I am a student that loves to define words. I search out the annals. The historical facts of words. Because in the power of our Lord shown the tongue. There is life and death. We don't realize how much death we speak through the theft our mouth. Because it proceeds from the inward parts, the heart. And so as I began to search, I get up early on the Shabbat, all right? I'd rather get up early than to get up five minutes late. And so I rise early just like I do during the course of the week. I keep a schedule. I don't want to be over interdated with sleep. I don't want that to be my pleasure, sleep. I don't want to lie in bed for hours. I get up. I get up. I don't want to take pleasure in that. I take pleasure in sleep. But I am not one that take pleasure in the over abundance of sleep. There was one thing that Yah would grant unto me. I would, if he asked... I would never sleep. And that's the truth. And so as I began to search Torah to understand its perfection, I say, what an amazement, because the words, whether it is used in an adverb, a verb, a noun, there's only 17 indications of it. I counted them all. I read them all. Only two places in Torah where Yah he encouraged Yahushua when he was anointed of the house of Yisrael to move beyond the paradigm of Moshe, to move in the excellence of Torah, and to turn the people, their hearts away from the evil matters that encourage their minds. We are a generation of people. We like to encourage one another in evil matters. And so when one does evil, we don't speak to them as to the retributions. And what you shall exact from them, 
for their ways that are corrupt, vile, and evil. David said, all of my enemies, those that conspire, they encourage themselves in evil matter. Things that are evil that matters to your hearts, you will encourage those that are sadistic and evil and corrupt. You will make sure they maintain the emphasis of their wickedness. Because in doing that, it doesn't expose you. And so they will say, Re'ak, you don't encourage. Well, everything I speak is a word of encouragement. And so I proceed from one method of determination to the other. To define the concept, the inception, the linguist thoughts of the creation of the word. What I find that I always go back to the concept of the mind of our Abba. That's why we need men, and strong men, not cowardly, immature boys who search out the rudiments, the excellence of definitive words, what they apply and what they mean. I'm going to teach, don't worry. Because in the process of that, I was looking at another word uh, that we often use called, quote, hope, unquote. It does not give the ramification of the word, yah, in his language, tikva, tikva. Because one can have a hope and not look for the expectation or for that to maturate, to mature, that they may receive it. But it's one thing about the tikva of yah. It is one that embrace that which shall be. It shall come. You shall see the maturity and the maturation of that thing. And that's why we speak words to each other. And do not understand the power of death that it creates in the hearts of many. It is like a man walking in his house and calling his wife the B word. Regardless of what she has done. It has an effect. It affects her, not for that moment, but for time to come. Instead of the elderly men being consumed with understanding definitive and understanding words, they're foolish. You're trying to promote them. Who's the smartest? Well, you don't know a damn thing. That's just a fact. It is the truth. There is more verbursting among men than it is women, basically. They tend to have more of a docile unless they're Jezebels. Don't write me or write with your folly. So there are those that think that he never encourages. I'm not going to encourage you in your evil. I give you one scripture today and the rest I will not tell you where they are. I want to define this, my aim of the word, encourage. All right, just listen. We think we're smart, don't we? Where you don't catch me. Oh, you don't even know what you're saying. That's simply part of your vernacular, your speech. And you think you have the understanding of the matter and you really do not. So I will define it not by some uh, speculative uh, understanding, but by its originality. And then I will define it in Yah's terminology. All right? I wrote this down. It says to encourage. This is the definitive from the Merriam-Webster. So just generally instilling with courage and confidence and purpose of fostering enough of these characteristics by advice, inductment, or similar influence to perform or to endure as indicated. So it is simply to strengthen one or encourage them in ways 
that you can see what the world called character building. You can never build character unless you're honest with you. You can never build character unless you're honest with you. One of the most pronounced uh, linguists of the time, his name is T.B. McCockley. T.B. McCockley. He gives us a definitive in the sense of attributes, what encouragement is. He says, nerves and steel. And I, my mind was taken back to the process of steel. How that it is rendered to be a tremendous, formable piece of material to build and construct. Some of the strongest of buildings is tried, is tried with fire. He says, nerves and steer are likely to indicate an imparting or collecting of qualities of moral strength, resolution, and courage for some special occasion, accomplish, task, or duty. They may differ in that still may be stronger in indicating uh, an inflexible. There is no flexibility. An inflexible resolve or uttered, uttered uh, insensibility uh, of what one would uh, inverate or mollify. Well, we don't understand what he just said. Just a mass of words of, to combobulate, to confuse, to diffuse. And so there is nothing of consumption that gives us pure wisdom of encouragement. Well, I'll read what it says in the Torah. How about that? And the word chazak, that's the only way it is enunciated. I read what Yah says encouragement is. It is to be firm, be caught fast, to, uh, to, uh, to secure. And then he used this word, obstinate. Do we know what obstinate is? Well, I'll define it in the language of your tongue. Out of the most respectable uh, Book of Definitive Merriam-Webster. To be obstinate is to be downright or tenacious persistence, usually connoting a solid determination or an unwavering purpose. We don't waver, do we? So we must be obstinate. And those that encourage us, they must be obstinate. And tell us of our fallacies and our falsehood. We don't like that. You think that when the Ima, the Avad, uh, repudiates one's child, uh, that that's not encouragement? He or she is obstinate. They are unflexible in their ways. They are not going to alter one iota to satisfy your hideous, heathenistic ways. Uh, a practice, neither is Yah. He's not going to do it, Yisrael. We are to be made rigid, made hard. That's what the process of refining steel does, does it. It makes it hard. It makes it strong to bear the winds, to bear the heights that it doesn't break. It doesn't bend in the turbulence of the winds that blows uh, with a greater ferocity and force uh, when a building is 200 stories uh, than it does at one story. To make strong, uh, and above all, it is to make one bold. And to make one bold. That's an essay of great wisdom if we measure it and begun to apply it to our hearts. Yeah. 
This is the only place. I will tell you who I will read from. I hear you are the Ach Davis, and you that the gather in the house of Yah there in Los Angeles, California. I want to read this one verse. It is when the mighty messenger, the king, the Melach, when he began to eradicate out of the midst of the nation of his people the strong forms of idolatry and sin and the purpose of their hearts that were defiant unto Torah. His name is Hezekiah, simply implying that Yah is my strength. And it says this. It says, moreover, Hezekiah, the strength of Yah, the fullness of Yah's strength in his bosom. It says he sava. He commanded the people with great authority. He commanded them with the strength of, of the wisdom of Torah. With the message of the prophets, the Navim. So he sava. He had the authority to command. That's why the president of the United States is known as the commander in chief. He is not only just the chief, but he is the commander. Irregardless if you like him, if you don't. Irregardless of your political points of view, he is the commander. And he is the chief, and the chief is of all commanders. So is the king. So was Hezekiah. He commanded all the people that dwelt in Yerushalayim. He said, I want you to give portions of your substance to the Kohim and to the priests, to those that labor in Torah, to those that admonish themselves to dig into the plethora of wealth of Torah, that when they speak unto the nation in Yerushalayim, the hearts may be made fat. He said, I want you to give a portion to the Zachayim, that they have no ill factors or anything that circumvent, prevents them from digging into the depths of Torah. He said to do that. He says to the Kaim and the Levi, why? That they might be encouraged. And he uses the word hasak, that they may be strong. And firm with their dissertation, the disposition, they will not sugarcoat things. He says that the elders might be encouraged in the Torah of Almighty Yah. You see, the elders today don't encourage themselves in the Torah. They encourage themselves in folly and foolishness. They're immature. You give to the Kohen. You give to the Levi, the tribe of Levi. Why? That they can see the very actions and the prominency of the power of Yah's truth with them, in them, that they may express that. And because of your great encouragement unto them, then they may reach to the depths of the great pillars of Torah and reveal that unto us that we may be excellent in our walk of Torah with great delight. And as David did when nothing encouraged you, you encourage yourself. So you that think that I don't encourage, I frankly don't give a damn. It's one thing that people speak and they have no thorough understanding of things. I don't want to know everything. I don't want to be able to answer everything. It's one thing I desire my heart to answer in truth. 
I don't care about the semantics, although that's important. I want to answer in truth that my words, as Shaul says, represents my conversation, my life, my beauty, my characteristics. So when I speak, you can examine those words by how I've performed before you, how I've walked among you, how I live with you and by you. The rest don't mean a damn thing. It doesn't mean a damn thing. You can be as brilliant as the most brilliant. You can amuse yourself and play with yourself with others by quoting scripture that you have no concept of what you're quoting and no knowledge. Because when a man is filled with the wisdom of Yah, it shines in his pondim, his face. When the Baptist says, Hon, see Hon, see with the wisdom of Yah, it shines in her robustness, in her character, her beauty. Not some weave wearing heifer, looking like a Jersey Bill, and some little effeminate man with hair down to his buttocks, and some little insecure boy that can't even read properly. And wants to exert some sense of strength, of authority for his own immature, insecure ways. That's not a man. I like this man. He upsets me. I rebuke him. I say to him things I would never say to you. I talk to him as to what is worth a mass. He doesn't have a damn bit of worth in him. None. Nothing. For some flesh. For all flesh. I'm so glad he said that. He is as the grass of the earth. And as the grass of the earth withers and fadeth away. I'm going to fade. But as old one would say, I think I'll test power while I have a chance. Oh, I think I just have, have, have a chance. Oh, I think I'll dance to Yahweh. Oh, while I'm alive, give me one more day, death. One more day, give me that. One more day, it all shall be over. One more day, it all shall be over. One more day is coming to Oh, it all shall be over one more day, oh, one more day, it shall be over. Over we're going on the cross, crossing the river of your town to see the face of Yah in the presence of your shoe. We're going on cross your town one more. Day it shall be day one day one day at a time one day one more day one I like that Don't think you're sitting on your lees, man. I got the scope on you. You can forget that. I want to teach today. So you that encourage one another to do evil, you continue to do that. I will encourage the nation from Torah. And by the way, that's found in Dabri Yachim or Second Chronicles. Uh, 31 4. 
and shall encourage myself today. I shall be strong. I shall be firm. I shall be obstinate. I won't waver. I won't alter anything. What I read out of the book, it is truth. Well, you're not going to tell us where it's hidden now. We need to get this paste in our hearts. We must hide the Torah in our hearts. That we sin not. That we break not Torah. That we defy not the mitzvah, the commandments of Yahweh. We know that these mitzvah of Yah, that's the lamp. The mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, these and this is the lamp of Yah. That is the near. And every lamp must have oil. It serves no purpose without oil. But the Torah is the ma'o, it is the light. Unto our direct the way that we must walk. The way we must traverse in this life. A reproof of instruction. That's encouragement. That is the way of life. That is encouragement. So that's why men have grown soft and purified. If I find one man among the house, just ten, I'll save it. So the men have become putty and soft. There's no way that a man can operate and orchestrate the profound activities of Torah unless there's a constant refining and judging his own hearts, his ways, his look. His poor name, his face. Because the more wisdom he received, the more light, the more ma'or. Different between the ma'or and the or. The or is the light. Your shoe is the power of the light, the or, of the illumination. Of, he is the ma'or. He is the rejoicing of our hearts. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And not this little false pretense of rejoicing that we call rejoicing. That's not the ma'o of Yom. It is the sadistic, self-conceited righteousness of pretense that you perform and put all in front of others that there may be accolades to strengthen you in your evil ways. There's nothing, my friend. Listen, if you get nothing I say today, there's nothing more precious than a man. And the strength of his issue, his woman. Not this sensation of sensualism and this, this, this forming a fomenting drive that produces nothing. Just an act. It doesn't cause the greatness of love to mature. And a dependency is just a beastly act like the big 2,000 plus pound bull we have. Frank, you don't give a damn if folks don't stand with me. I saw that long, long ago. Mama didn't stop me. Have no sons or daughters. Wife hasn't stopped me. In this false delusional perception of friendship, that certainly hasn't. There's nothing more precious than a man. That's why the assault against him is so vicious. Oh, you don't trust no man. I no more than you now. Well, you don't know a damn thing if you know more than I know. Because if you make your comparison with me, I know you're shallow. Because I'm one, I know I'm ignorant. I know that. 
Is it too cold for you back there, mama? You all turn one of these air conditions off, all right? Hallelujah. I don't want mama to get cold. She's getting old. And keep her bones warm. Hallelujah. I know how the cold weather affects her. All these years she's been faithful with me. Never talk back to me. Because I've never talked down to her. I had to. Didn't let daughter, grand youngins, sons, sister, nobody turn against me. Hasn't gone to other with some dis encouraged malcontent to speak against me? No, she hasn't. You're not going to tell me that. So I want to make sure I get a dress right for the day that's coming. And she's not trying to dress right for a man. She doesn't need that. She needs the man. That's right, mama. That's right. We that are men, if we loved her, we were encouraged her in her strength. I shall. I want to teach Yisraya today. And I certainly want to take my time. I want to do it methodically. And simply that my moves are already perpetrated in the mind of Yeshua. And every move I make toward the winning goal, uh, it is precise. The mechanics, the mythology, my energy, my strength, that will produce the winning basket. And so this, what this message shall do today, yes, will We'll point out our weaknesses, our fallacies, and our own corruption. But yet, we can rest assuredly in the Uth, in the Tikva, in the Dabar, and the Dabar of Omariya. Will you set all of those words to impress us? No. We can rest in the assurance of his promises. In order for us to understand that, we must see what he promised. You know that word promise is not even really in the Torah as far as written in Torah. It may be found a few times, but it's not in Torah. So I want to, today, that you will come away with this profound understanding, the making of, of a great nation. The demise of that nation. And the rising. Of the gods. Of that nation. There is one thing that makes a strong nation. As. What we call this nation. It is a fledgling. Weak. Handicapped. Jezebel. That is what America is. She is not strong because she has military superiority, the power to oppress, suppress, to diminish the beauty of any nation of people and through her scheme of mockery and dislodging them, discounting them. And making them all marginalized as though their value is not worth a damn. But she always speaks with this arrogant identity of herself. That the thing that makes this nation greater than all nations is her constitution. She has a constitution. I want to define that. The word constitution. I want to teach us today. It is defined. It is the act of establishing the aggregate. We understand what an aggregate is. It is the sum. It is the mass of the collective. Of moral, spiritual, 
substance of identities that is the sum of a people and a nation. I'm doing this for our own learnings. So it is the establish of the aggregate, or we the people of the united snakes of demology. We're here to form a more perfect. How do you get a perfect union without Yah? It is of a person, and this is what a constitution does. It establishes a person the physical, physiological, psyche of psychological characteristics. In essence, what has been imparted into you and taught unto you, it shapes your character. So the constitution of this nation says uh, you are greater people because uh, you have a document that is greater than any nation. We have what we call democracy and capitalism, yet we are deprived poor people. We're broke. The homes are broken. The marriages are broken. Your children are broken. You are broken. You're broke in your pockets. We're broke in our minds. We're broken. So it is the sum of that, of the aggregate. That gives a people stability and character and strength. That when they have nothing else to rely upon, the resolve is in the constitution. They can draw from that document that states their value. It gives them validity. It shows them the state of whom they are. And they constant revisit it. That it is so that in this nation, we have what they call constitutional lawyers. And they study constitution. Among Israel, we have none that studies one of the mitzvah to teach us the concepts, the relevance of it. To teach us the knowledge of it. That would take a man all of his life to understand the depths, the dimension of it. They're full of folly. Bullshisting. They're ignorant. They're full of pretense. They think they know, but they don't know a damn thing. Period. I don't take it back, man. Period. So they have those that are constitutional lawyers. Uh, that they study the ramification of the constitution. And how do they understand the depth of what we call the Constitution? Uh, it is an analy- analytical process by uh, the jurisprudence or the wisdom of law that they examine every single word. You may not like me, but that's all right. Because I'm not here to step on your toes. I'm here to rip your damn wicked heart out. They examine every word. It's amazing that there are those that would say Mr. Obama doesn't know the Constitution, but he's a constitutional lawyer. Graduated cum laude from Harvard University. That's an ignorant mind. That's an ignorant, backwater, stupid mind. This man has credentials. You are a stupid jackass. This man is a constitutional lawyer. Oh, he's this man in the constitution. How do you know? Where? Where have your freedom been dissolved to that degree? The man is a scholar of constitutional law. And in this nation, there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of books on constitutional law. They're scholars of constitutional law. They're those that have studied their whole life Just to try to understand one centilla of the dynamics of the Constitution. To draw from the mindset of those or the formers of the Constitution. The concept of life. To integrate that into the reality of life today. We don't do that. We don't have elderly men today that do that. They're full of their damn wickedness and stupidity. They're full of their juvenile nature. You elderly daughters as well. Uh, 
And so in every great nation, there must be a constitution. There's only one nation that Yah identifies as Am, A-M, like in our vernacular. Am, Rab, R-A-B, Rav, R-A-V, hyphen, Abta, A-T-A-H. Am, A-M, Rav, Abta. The great nation, Gadol. The great nation is not just a nation of great strength, a municipality. But it is a nation of great character because the constitution cannot be defied. The knowledge of the constitution spread abroad to every nation. Nations reverence the constitution and try to draw similarities to that. And the people, you see, the fruit of the constitution uh, has become fruitful in their lives. So there is only one Am, Rab Atta, that is the nation of Yisraya, which implies a great nation in the midst of the nation. What nation? The nation of the Goim, of the Goi, the nation of a heathen people, of a people that have no constitutional rights in Torah, and people that are not of the elect or the Borkir, the select seed of Yah, and then the strength of their reward, uh, it has come through Abraham, uh, Yitzhak, and Yaakob. Just like the constitutional jurist, uh, he consults constantly uh, with things that he has read, understand, uh, to revive them in his mind, uh, to reassure him of the exact and the magnitude and the multitude of what he has learned uh, to refresh himself constantly. We don't do that. And those men that think that they're strong, they don't do that. That's why they're weak as ducks, you run. I don't take it back. You're quite insulting. We insult ya. Yeah. I have nothing to do but to preach today and eat some wonderful foods and then I hopefully I can lie down for a few moments. The great nation, the making of the great nation, the downfall and the creation of the gods. I want you to begin with this preface. I want you to hear this. Jao speaks in this profound narrative to the house of those that were at Corinth, yeah. To give them assurance to speak with a plethora or a wealth of the knowledge of Torah that they would not so soon be shaken in mind. And he says this in the Torah, he says this. He says, for all he uses the word kol, all, K-O-L-E, everything, every small minute detail. He says, uh, for all the promises of Yah, the Dabar, the Utha, the Dabarim, his words, as in my days, before my time, uh, a man's constitution was his word. You will say, my word is my bond. My word is going to attach me to the statement. For all the promises of Yah, they are clean. Yes, 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 absolutely. There is no deterring from that. All of them, all of them. Yah said it, it's settled, and that's enough. For all of them are king. Yes, absolutely confirmed by what? By his oath. When he could swear by no greater power, he swore by himself. All of them, all of the promises, all of the promises, all of the promises of Yah. I want to establish this 
to show us something. All of the promises of Yah, they are yes. And they are all in Him. And then Shaul says, he says, so be it, or Amen. It is so. It is fulfilled. It is Sarola. And he says, for that reason, it is to the chabod or the greatness of his honor of Yah. What? Through us. See, it is through us that his promises, they are performed. That's why we need scholarly men to study just one detail of Torah. One. Not trying to be the master of everything. Then this one got a little bit, that one got a little bit, this one got a little bit, that 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 one got a little bit. And then when you bring it all together collectively, you can't make no cake just with sugar, can you? All right. Sugar is one of the main ingredients, is it? So is the flour. So is the water. So are they all equal? They're all equal. Are they all important? So this damn wicked generation that brings demise among y'all's people, I'm greater than you. My ability to exact, to extrapolate from Torah is greater than what you have. You're stupid, boy. So that's why they promote themselves, to see who can quote something that won read last week or last month. Well, I'm going to break it down. Don't worry. This man is going to teach today, okay? Hallelujah. So all of the promises of Yah, they are him. Yes, absolutely. There is no deferring of that. But Yah says, uh, how do I know that is true? Because he is the Abba that changed not. Therefore, the sons, the seed of Yaakov, we have not been the Shochath. We have not been eviscerated or destroyed or exterminated and brought down to the gates of hell. He doesn't change. He's the same today, yesterday. His Torah never changed. So it's not that men are working with something that fluctuates a bit with season and time. It's that our own character, our personality fluctuates. And that's what makes us weak. We got this identity of speaking highly of ourselves, uh, never esteeming the Acha, the Yachotza, in a higher than us. Uh, why? Because we have no heights. That's why we can't esteem others. That's why. We can't esteem others because we have nothing. When a man or woman is sure of themselves, they don't mind, oh, you're so pretty. You look so nice. Man, how you doing? I see people when I talk to people, I talk that way. Hey, man, what? Look at. How you doing, man? They don't know how to respond to me. I hate silly people, though. I'm going to teach. I go to the bakery, and there's this woman. She's so silly. Everything is laughing. <laughs> you, you teach. <laughs> I, don't, I don't laugh. I don't even look at her. Thank you, ma'am. You know what? I used to go in there. She was very obnoxious. How many do you, she, she wanted to make sure. I don't even, people do, I don't even count. How many do you have? Now it's how many do you have? Twelve of these. Okay. So at first she would not even take my word. So I have no compunction with that. How many of those you have? I got ten. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Don't worry about me again. You count them. You count them. So you can count them one by one. And I don't care where you come to, that's encouragement. These are words of strength. You can always rely upon the resolution that it will bring. It will bring great resolve. It will bring great capacity and strength to one's life. So all of them, not one of them are null. Not one of them is any less discounted than the other. That's why on the cake, the sugar is as important as the flour, the flour as the eggs, the eggs as the water. You don't have a cake without all the ingredients. That's why we need men to be ingredient, uh, to have the ingredients uh, of the fullness. Uh, the tome. That the cup runs over. If it's just one aspect, the cup is full and you can drink from that cup. I know an empty, dry cup 
dirty from a full cup that's full of living water. Well, that doesn't give us some kind of witness, man. I read another place as this great event took place. Shalomu and Solomon. As he's seen the beautiful, the ornaments of the house bed of Yah. As he made pala, he made prayer to honor Yah and to esteem him. He writes by the directive of the Ruach out of his bosom. He uses the words Baruch et Ya et Baruch. Ya et Baruch, above all things. Above the heavens, I will bless Yah. Above all creation, I will esteem him. Above the magnitude of my strength, my inability, sir. He says, Barach, Baruch, et Yah. Bless Almighty Yah. He says, Bless be Yah. Hua Shalomo. He has given Minucha, He has given rest. He has given us tranquility and Shalom and quietness in the midst of a Torah's uh, wicked generation. Especially at this time. It's crazy out there. It doesn't bother me what they do out there. I can take advantage of something here for the community. Damn Christmas uh, and their pagan lies. But I certainly will take advantage of it. But the folks are so crazy. I said, Aksimi, I saw this poor family. You knew they were poor. You knew they were from the trailer park. And yet they are spending their last pennies on such fruitless, trivial thing. And so the man passed by me. How you doing, man? We speak. I'm all right. How are you doing? Just fine, my friend. Everything's all right today. You think that I'm going to tell him about yon, the paganism of Christmas? See, a wise man doesn't do that. A fool does try to show his excellence. And he doesn't conquer anything. He's just a silly boy. He says, bless be Yah who has given us rest to his people, only Yisrael. How? According to all that he has promised, all that he has done, all that he has uttered, all that he has spoken, all that he has declared, all that has come from the depth of his bosom. And the word Taba has an indication of not just promise, but it is the warning. It is the correction. That's what Taba, D A B, D A W B A R, Taba, a D A W B A W. He has spoken warning unto us. He has given unto us all according to all that he has promised. He said, There has not failed one word of his tough promises. Not one word. Tell me one word that has failed of the promises of Yah. We're not reminded of that. We don't have those that teach us that. We don't have those to study, to exact from Torah, the promises of Yah to teach us. Because they're so juvenile, they don't like you to tell them that. We don't like to be told of our weaknesses, do we? That's how man becomes strong. But all of his weaknesses are pointed out. That's how woman becomes strong. Had a woman to write me the other day and tell me the story of her circumstance, how she defied her husband. She thought it was the will of the Most High to leave him, go take care of her mama and her daddy. And she did not do what he says. Although she was serving Yah, I said, you were not serving Yah. You did that, you were not serving Yah. I did not answer her to, with some kind of cream puff lie that most men would. I said, first of all, Thank you for the email. The site has been an inspiration to you. First of all, you were not serving Yah. Because if you were serving Yah, you would have been on the authority and the leadership of your ish, your man. You would have not left your husband to take your mommy, daddy. Because when a woman or a man leaves his father, his mother's house, and cleave unto a wife, they become ichat. You don't put mama over wife. You don't put children over wife. You don't put granddaddy over wife. You don't put mama over husband. You don't put grandchildren over wife or husband. You're wrong. Fat out. You're wrong. But that's my mama. Go to your mama. Well, what do I do? He's living a certain life where you have driven that man to that. And I said to her, I won't even answer the other part of your question. You must first of all get your mind right and your heart right with y'all. 
See these little weak belly men will say, well, you, you know, just encourage them. No, I'm not telling her that. You got to rectify that which you have done. You did the man wrong. I say you shouldn't even worry about the other part, what you want to do. Uh, and not only her heart is right because I hope she's listening. We need bold men and strong men, courageous men. Drove that man to something that was wrong. You do the same thing with another man. Moving on. He says he would do all according to all he has promised. There has not failed one word of his tub promises, his daba, which he promised by who? By the hand of Moshe, his servant. And the promises came unto Moshe. They were established before he was ever birthed. The other Daba, the promises of Yah, the assurance, the one that had the ability to speak and to grant it, that we can have an expectation. We can know what the expected end shall be. That's what a promise is. You can wait in that promise. You can grow in the promises of Torah. You can recline and rest and have great comfort in the promises of Yah's Torah. We're trying to find that outside of that ram. We're trying to establish our own constitution. There is a constitution of Torah that brings about the riches of Yah. And that's the truth. We must obey what he commands us, Yisrael. One last event that concerned the promises. You got to understand the promises. In order to stand the composition of a great nation. And am Rav Atta Yisraya. And then the power to dismantle that. By the mind of the God creating society. Nobody tells us a damn thing because we are all gods. And there is nothing more vile than a damn wicked God. Every God is a damn dog. The gods are dogs and they've turned back to their own puke. Their own nidda, their own bloody stinking rags of a minister woman rag laying in the sun with maggots in it. That's encouragement. I like the way he talks. He would help me grow. I like you, man. No, I love you, man. So here is a great pronouncement here. That David, although he wasn't there, he was stirred up in his pure mind as to the event of this narrative. And he speaks here in Tehillia. Don't worry about where I'm at. We've learned how to try to follow along, but we have not learned how to hear. We must shemach. So he speaks emphatically here. He said, I'm amazed at the ramification of words of our forefathers' language. I'm amazed at the revelation of what reveals unto us. That he said, the people, they ask. They show al. They ask very carefully and skillfully with a purpose and a directive. It says they ask, and Yah brought quail. I began to examine just that word this morning. It has no indication as to what we think it is. Oh, it was meat. It was the quail. But it was the meat of the great tranquility and the shalom of Yah. One day, I'm going to teach that. So they ask for quail. They ask for quail. And it says, an almighty Yah, he, be, uh, he satisfied, he satiated them. He gave them the fullness. He said, he sent them the breath of lecture of the heavens out of the Hashemayim. And it says, not only that, but he opened the rock. He opened the strength of Torah. He opened the revelation of the wisdom of Torah. He opened the rock and the Mayam 
and the Mayan, the waters gush out. He that believes on your shore, like the Torah has said, out of his bottom, out of his belly shall flow the gushing and the great extent of the living water. That's what gushes out of the Torah. It's the water that washes you and cleanses you. It is the water that quenched the thirst in the midst of a dry nation without Torah delight. When he opened the rock, the waters rushed out and it ran in dry place like a yam, like a great river. Then, then yeah, Davi said, and then Almighty Yahweh, he zakhah, he recalled to his mind. He remembered his, his. I've had liars to stand before me and make some promises to me. I don't like people to make promises to me. Just keep them in your heart. Evangel Hartfield taught me something 30 some years ago, 35 years ago. He taught me, son, be careful with your words. Just be quiet. Shut your mouth. And I've learned that. And I shut my mouth when he said that to me. He said, shut your mouth. You talk too much. That's your problem. You vow, vow. You must pay your vow. And one of the first things he taught me, he took me to the book with Gidi and the worry of Yah. Shut your mouth, boy. And I shut my mouth. This stupid generation doesn't know how to do that. They love to talk, talk. As one of the times he preached, he talked about smartphones. And they're dumb as they come. We are dumb. Hear this, Yisraya. You make mock of No, we mock Yah. Because we have deceived ourselves to think that we're not going to pay for our sins. Be not deceived. Yah is not mocked. For so man so that shall he reap. And we deceived ourselves. We mock in Yah. We are mocking Yah. We, 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 we're making fun of him. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, for Yah remembered his Chodesh. His set apart promises. And Abraham, his servant, he remembered what he said unto Abraham. You know, we are a nation that we will read that. We will not search to what he said to Abraham. I'm going to show you. I am going to show you what he said to Abraham. How about that? Will you tell those words of find it now? I want you to listen and listen and listen. And hide this Torah in your bosom that you can find it yourself. We will take down the scripture. We will never go back and look at them. Let's just be genuine. Very few do that. And the ones that do it, it is an exception. You color the book with all kinds of colorings and you never. He was reminded. Zachai was brought back. Yah doesn't forget anything because what he speaks, he is. What he speaks, he is. He is his, um, uh, he is the utterance of his voice. Uh, he is the words. Uh, that's why the word was made flesh. That's why we beheld the power of his Hamashiach. Now you're not going to get this in these nickel dime uh, cookie store whorehouses today uh, to placate and satisfy the flesh uh, and tell the folks, you're Israel, you're, you're the nation. You're the promise and they go out and get drunk as skunks. Lay with every woman uh, Yah's house is not a place where we cuddle ourselves uh, in some kind of romantic intimacy. Men, you don't do that in Yah's house. Women, you don't do that. Uh, it's wrong. That's why Yah always had the women set one place in the men because men began to cuddle themselves. Come on, man, you don't do that because you began to excite certain uh, attributes of your emotions. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. And that's just a fact. You begin to coddle certain parts of your emotion. It's wrong. It's wrong. He remembered what Yah had said. Yah remembered his words and he drove them into the bosom of David. And he caused his heart to be excited. You know, these Hebrews don't like me. They're not even Hebrews. They're not the son of Ibram. They don't like me. One time they had me on some of their web connections. They 
I asked one one day, what happened? He said, we took you down. We, we, don't, we don't care for you. So I'm glad of that. They're not, they're not the sons of Abraham. I'm going to do some powerful teachings and show us some things. This is a nation of people that are so seductive and so stupid. You got these little boys that learn one or two scriptures and they think they know everything. That's what they are. And it's a fact. What are the promises of Yah? What, what did Yah remember when he said to Abraham? Can I show you? Will you believe it? Will you know that it's in the book if I read it? Well, I'm not going to tell you where it's at. How about that, Octave? It's out there. Or they will find it. I will read what it says. This is the constitution of the making of a great nation. Your says to Abram. This is what he says to him. We know that Abram, his name implies he is the one that is exalted. He is the exalted Avat, the exalted father. You exalted him above all fathers. He is the father of the nation. He is where the inception of the nation began. And through Yitzhak, the promises were fulfilled, not in Esav, but Yaqob. In Yaqob, Yisra'ya. For you have prevailed with Yah. And not only with Yah, but with men. Hallelujah. This is the promise of the Daba. See, these are Yah's words. That's why it is Daba, a Daba. Daba. It is his oath. It is his word. It is his, uh, it is his, uh, it is the, these are the words of, of, uh, of his faithfulness. When you talk about promise, you talk about faithfulness. You talk about that builds confidence. And this is what Yah says in the book of Bereshit. He says this. Yah says unto Abraham, I will make you an Amrav Atan. He says, and I will, bara, I will make, I will create out of a nothing people. Yah says, I will make you a Gadol or a Gadal, a distinguished, a great. I will make you a great nation of numerics. Nation of constitution, a nation of the great plethora of the great riches of wisdom uh, and knowledge and understanding. Uh, he said, I will make you a nation of importance. I will make you a nation of mighty men. I will make you a nation of strong men. I will make you a nation of daughters that are different, not some, uh, some Jezebel with some kind of damn or horse hair ahead. Some Indian they bought the hair from some Indian woman, uh, robbed her of her beauty just, just to bring it here for some, uh, some nut fruit woman uh, to put it in her head. I don't care if you don't like me. Uh, let's get real. That's some kind of glue, glue in her head. She looked like a damn fool. Uh, just be happy with what you got. And some little effeminate boy with all these dread plaits. Uh, Samson had seven locks, and they're filthy men. And when a Nazarene or Nazarite touched that which was unclean, they touched their unclean sins all the time. They cut it off. Walk around here looking like some. They look ignorant. Thousand little old plots. I don't care if you don't like me. I, I said for them not to like me. I said. So they robbed that beautiful Indian woman, that daughter of Tizayon for hair. She is so poor, they buy her for pennies. Uh, and these fruit cakes here will buy it uh, and put it in their hair. And they think they're beautiful with some false hair woman. Uh, everything about me is real. From my gut all the way down, it's real. Uh, yes, he is real. Yes, yeah, real. He said, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your Hashem, I will make your name, I will make the pronouncing of your name, your reputation, your fame. He said, I will make your name Gadol, I will make your name great. That's what Yah says. That's what Yah says. From the time they came out of Yisra'ya to the king of David, hundreds of years passed, and yet Yah remembered his promises. His promises, all the promises of Yah are, they are, yes. They're chain. They're absolutely. He said, I will make you a great nation. And he says, and you shall be a blessing. You shall be a better car. You shall be a blessing. You shall enrich all. Everyone that embrace you, they shall be enriched. 
Everyone that uh, pronounce you uh, as association, they shall grow with maturity and they shall be rich. Hell, we're not a blessing to no one. We're not even a blessing to one another. Those that call themselves Yisrael, they're not even a blessing to each other. We don't bear the burdens of each other. We don't strengthen the hands of the Sadiq. We strengthen the hands of the wicked and the unrighteous what we do. A shell man. I'm not working for a dollar bill. I'm working to get in. Working, 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 trying to get home. Well, I'm working, 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 trying to get home. I got you, mama. I know what to do to get you moving. Some of the dead folks never move. They're dead because of their sin. Y'all tells us to rejoice, we rejoice. We are such damn stop it. We're damn hypocrites what we are. I'm going to teach. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Can I do that? You want me to preach a little bit, huh? Hallelujah. Yah says, and I will bless them that bless you. He uses the word Ara, I will curse. I will lay an anathema upon that one. They shall never prosper. Their mind shall never be enriched. It shall be a vagabond of a people and a mind. He says, I shall Ara, I will curse them. Him that curse you, that speak evil about, about you, that reject you, that denounce you. We don't know the promises of Yah. That's why we live beneath uh, even this corruption of our own flesh. This is what Yah says. He said, oh, curse them. Oh, I know how the lying dogs, the Benny Hens, uh, and these freaks out of hell, these devils, what they do. Uh, they're robbing the people. They're robbing these simple-minded women uh, and these effeminate men. They're effeminate boys. I love my woman. No woman is going to dictate the oracles of Yah to me. No woman. Not one. I didn't even let my mother do that. I said, hold up, mama. I'm a man. You, my son. I said, I understand that. But I'm the man that came out of you, O woman. You listen to me. Where the Torah, the Mitzvah say, honor thy father and thy mother and your days belong upon the land of Baya I give to you. You don't even honor yours. You talk to her like she's a dog with malcontent, mistreatment, you damn hypocrite. You lie to her. If she cracks the grave today, she said the boy didn't lie. He was ignorant in some of the things he said. But he didn't lie to me. Yah says, I'm going to curse them that curse you. He said, you shall of all families, not some. Of course, all families of the earth be berakai. Berakai. You know blessed people? You know one of the sure signs of a blessed people? The word berakai, the berakai, it is that, it is a nation, it is a people, it is an am, that whereby the praises and the blessings of Yah proceeds out of them. In all things we give todah. See, from the great nation, our, our mouths are not mommed. We can talk about all kind of damn folly, can't we? But when it comes to Torah and the blessings of Yah, we get off a of mom. We get off a of quiet. We don't have no energy, but get three or four of you act together, two or three of you hooking together, and start talking about some damn foolishness. Ha <laughs> Even a conversation that's fallen laughter. Yeah, brother, I read that scripture. <laughs> yeah, that what it said. I think that's a nice scripture. You ever read that one? <laughs> Never forget in my days as growing up as a young man. Although people have done me wrong, Mama, I don't discard what they have said to me. Oh, brother Rogers on there, he said to me, Well, they son, don't ever, which that wasn't my my morantum. Don't ever get in the pulpit and laugh and clown. Tell no jokes. He said, you stand a stern faced it and sincere. He would not even let you have a glass of water in that, on that roster. I didn't fight him. 
but I took it to heart because it had great value. See, I get up and act like a jackass of a clown. Now, this is serious. We must be sober and sincere, Yisraya. We clowned enough. He says, and you shall be the people that's blessed above all nations of the earth. That shall be a berachiah. Where the praises of Yah shall go forth. Why? Because you have the riches of Yah. You have the prosperity. You, you, you have the adoration of Yah. His, your name is in his bosom. His eyes are upon you. You shall be the people whereby the praises of Yah shall go forth. We don't praise you. We get happy over some, something we find in a damn trash pile at the dollar store. Oh, girl, you brought me some cookies. Oh, I love you. Come on. <laughs> Brother, you brought. Don't bring me that coconut cake. You know what I do with it. You brought. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know that that's. That is my weakness. I love it. And I'm not saying that for you to do it. Don't bring many. Getting ready to go down to uh, to Zion. And getting ready, getting my heart, getting my heart right with y'all. Let me move on, Yisrael. As I stated in the preface of the beginning, there's no great nation without a constitution. It must be the aggregates of the sum to create a morality, a strength, character, and personality. And assurance because you know in that there are promises. And every constitution, it is made up with words. The manifesto of any constitution, it is by words. The constitution of the United States of America, the words. Oh, I keep one on my desk just every now and then to refresh myself. Oh, I keep the Constitution. I got the preambles and all of that. I paid a buck for it. It's, come on, you find them in the dollar store all day. And I'll pick it up and refresh myself. Uh, see what it says. Not that I need that Constitution. But every great nation, here's Yah's Constitution. I know we think we know, but I want to give you the Constitution of Yah. This is what Yah says out of the mouth of Moshe. It is found in Dibarim. Hear it. He says unto his nation, he says, now therefore above all things, he says, I want you to shemach, listen, hearken, hear with the, with, the, with the perfect obedience to obey and to thoroughly examine it by my mind. He says, now shemach all Yisraya, I want you to hear, I want you to listen, I want you to obey, I want you to obey the uh, hook or the statues. What is the statue? It is what has been prescribed. And there is no statue of limitation on the statues of Yah. And all of them are fulfilling your sure Hamashiach. When a man has the dynamics of the true witness of Yah, he doesn't fight against Torah. He says, I want you, Yisrael, to hear what the statues, my actions prescribe. He says, not only that, but I want you to listen to the Mishpatim, the judgment. We don't want judgment, do we? Every strong nation, this is the constitution of the nation of Yah. He says, which I shall lomad, which I shall teach you. Uh, and when one teaches, uh, you train, you bring them up in that instruction. Uh, you refine them, uh, you, you, you correct them. When you teach them, do you correct? If you don't have any correction in your teachings, it's not worth a damn. He says you train you uh, for what? This is the most vital thing. To do them. To asa. To asa. To perform. To do them. To carry out. To allow the activity of that to resonate, to flow from what you must do. You must accomplish what it says. When mother said, I want you to do your homework, that means she does a third of it? No, I want you to do your homework. When the teacher says, I want you to do that assignment, you got two days to finish it, that means that you got ten days, you got two days. He says, and I want you to assign, to allow them to fashion you, to form you, to shape your mind. We let every kind of wicked, corrupt thing shape us and form our images and our thoughts. And the sad part is that we're getting older and we haven't changed one damn iota. 
I don't want to be like I was yesterday. I don't want to be like that, Zakin. I don't want to be like I was the day before. And I don't want tomorrow to be like I was today. The same man that came against me, he taught me something very valuable. He said, I want to be kinder to you than you are to me. I will tolerate you. If I can tolerate me, I can tolerate any man. He taught me something. If I can tolerate me, I can tolerate any man. I want to be kinder to you than. And I said, oh man, I won't, I won't forget that. I'll take that. It's valuable. It's something to follow. You always treat others kind, kinder today than you did yesterday. You treat them kind like you treat you. Oh, I know people don't think I'm kind, but that's all right. I don't, I don't have time to worry about this immature generation. You know what they think. I, I don't have time for that. You understand? I, I give you the truth. You can't, you can't challenge me with what I'm teaching today. I will proceed. He said, I want you to do them. Why? That you may, he used the word not just live. Uh, he used the word chaya, that you may live. Now, I want to define chaya according to the language of our forefather Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. He says that you may live. This is what chaya, not chayil, but chaya. It is to have life. How many of I want? I read in the obituary this morning, saw my a very attractive woman. She was dead, 48. Young man, he had this astutious appearance, dead, 46. I said, yeah, you know, I, I'm beyond that, but I know that my years are not. I saw 177. I said, well, if I live that old, I don't have that many more years to go to 77. It's short. But higher that you may live, it is to have life, to remain alive, to sustain life, to live prosperly, live forever, and above all. To be restored to the Rafa, the health. Uh, yeah. To be restored to health. Get right with Yah. And do it now. Get right with Yah. Let the Torah show you how. And get right down at Yahshua's feet where he shed his precious time oh, get right get right get right Israel get right everybody got to get right with you that's alright you know when those wicked people get on the stage boy they cut it up don't they people just go crazy Get it on, girl. Who sing that song in the days? Let's get it on. Oh, yeah. When mom said, let's get it on. And Yah says us, let's get it on. And we lock a pack of. It is the truth. Well, you don't know how to encourage. Uh, okay, then. He said, not only that, but you to live uh, he says, and when you do that, to live and possess the land which Yah, your sovereign master of your avat, gives to you. I'm going to do a teaching just on that and demonstrate with maps. And I will show you in detail. I don't sit around and loyal on some little trivia mishap or something that is not important. I study things and I search. I'm not looking for some kind of damn silly stuff on internet, Facebook and MySpace. I don't Twitter or tweet no damn body. I don't play. I don't play on a cell phone or a smartphone. I don't play on it. And that's a fact. He says, uh, I want to give you one precaution. He said, you shall not yourself. You shall not add. Listen, this is what yourself is. Yourself. Can I tell you what I mean? Just do what he tells you to do. Do no more than he commands you. Well, I know yours. He sweep on me. I'm going to do more. No, just do what he tells you to do. Just do what he commands you to do. You're trying to generate some kind of a perception of you. If we obey him and love him, we do just what he said. He said, don't yourself, don't add nothing. He said, I don't want you to add one thing to the word which I command you. Neither shall you gara. Neither shall you diminish, neither shall you take away. Just do what I said. Do what it tells you to do. Uh, don't try to refine it. Don't try to say that. Uh, I know it said that, but I want to do more than that. No, when you do more than that, you're wrong. It is the making and the creating of the God mind. I'm telling you, I'll get to that. Uh, you do just what he said. Just like a parent say, I want to do just what I told you. No more than that. Just do that. 
He said, you should not add to the word that I command you, neither shall you diminish. He said, alt from it. He said, that you may keep the mitzvah, the commandments of Yahweh, which I command you. Just do what he commands us. Just obey what he has taught us. Don't do no less, don't do no more. Fashion yourself to do that. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, to love him with all, just do that. Uh, anything more than that is sin. Uh, just do what he's. I'm so glad he. He said, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you should have done more. No. He gave the one, one talent. He didn't tell him to go. He says, just put it to usury. Just use it. Don't hide it. That's all he said. No, 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 no. He said, you wicked and corrupt servant. He said, take it from him, give it to the one that has five, I gave five. He said, and cast that damn dog out into outer darkness, into hell where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can take it any way you want to, but that's what he said. So if he gives you one little mite, take it and use it for him. If he gives you one talent, take it and use it for him. If you don't know how to do nothing but be kind to someone, not a damn false hypocrite. I hate a hypocrite. There are things that I, there are certain kinds of attitudes I don't like. I don't like hypocrites. I don't like lying. I can deal with an adulterous, uh, fornicating beast and a liar. If he just tell me, man, I just, I, I'm just wrong. I can deal with him. But a liar, I don't want to be around a liar. I don't like a hypocrite. No, man, I would never do nothing like that. What's up, girl? How you doing? You look frosty as frosty flakes. Uh, you don't think that would, when we get, <laughs> Oh, you girl, you look frosty, frosty flakes. <laughs> you need some milk, girl. Come on. Women are silly. She will say, boy, go to your mom and tell her to give you some frosty flakes. You don't have to respond to that one. Get right with Yam. Let the Torah show you how. Get your wicked heart clean by the washing of the Torah. Allow this water of Yah flow down from the heavens above. Wash your filthy self in the Torah. Uh, yeah. Now I want you all to close your books up, all right? I want you all to listen to me. You don't need to read now. I want you to listen to me. Close them up, all right? I don't want you all to read. That's our problem. Close your books up and listen. I want you to read here. That's our problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah goes on to say unto this great nation, he said, don't add to my mitzvah, but keep the mitzvah where I command you. He talks about their eyes. He says, your eye in, your spiritual, your mental perception, your knowledge. He said, your eyes have seen what Yah did. Now you have seen what he did unto Belapora, the Lord of the gaps. And we got all of our lords, don't we? We got gaps in our lives and space in our lives. And we allow that lording spirit to rule. He says, uh, for all the men that follow Belapora, which Yahyoaba has destroyed them of among you. Uh, he's going to do that. He's going to destroy the spirit of Baal, uh, the lording or the ruling, uh, when one is not walking uh, in the restraints uh, that shall refine the man's life, uh, and he compels other. It's like me telling you to do something, and I don't do it. I am a hypocrite. Yeah. I will never tell you. Well, you know, I, I make mistakes. No, you get right. Get your heart right, man. Daughter, you are wicked. Get your wicked heart right. Well, we all got faults. No, we all don't have fault. Eo was a perfect and upright man. But a man, would a man understand his fallacies, he immediately turned to Torah. He doesn't hold on to sin for a week or two weeks. You may. Uh? The Torah tells us to mark a perfect and an upright man. For the end of that man is shalom. You tell me there are none? But a man is hard as uh, when the principles of his life is, is based upon Torah. Now I'm not going to tell you that. No, if he told you you're wicked, you're wicked. Uh, you need to get your wicked heart right. Uh. Now that's how you do it. Uh. We encourage each other to do wrong and wickedly. Uh. 
We strengthen the hand because we know we are weak at that. And so to cover our sin, we say, well, don't worry about it. Just know you better worry about it. Huh? You better consider your ways. You better know what you are doing. You better know when you're wrong. Yah huh? says, your eyes have seen what Yah did to this people. Huh? He said, behold, I have taught. I have lamed. I have trained you. I've disciplined you. I've instructed you. Uh, he says in the statutes and judgment. Uh, even as Yah my Abba commanded me. Uh, he commanded him his Sava. When one makes a Sava or command, it is saying, I got every bit of authority. Uh, it's almost like a soldier when the captain say, go out to the left flank and overtake them. He says, I'm not going to do it. He unstraps his 45 pistol. He says, you're not going. Captain, I'm not going to do it. And he go boom, 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 boom. Send him home in the coffin. Tell his mommy he got killed in, in the duty. Enemy fire. Oh, that's why all officers strap a 45. Not a 38. As my boy would say, a 38, they strap a 45. And when you don't obey in the midst of military conflict, boom, boom, boom. They got every right. They got the authority to kill you, a deserter to cause some kind of malcontentment among Israel. And we don't want to kill them. We don't want to destroy Baal among us. Yah says, damn it, I'm going to do it. That's what he's going to do. You can buy all the lies you want, but you need to buy truth. And if this doesn't encourage your heart, you are a sensely ins- senseless, insensitive creature of darkness. This is truth here. This is no playtime. We must prepare ourselves. We got a journey. Death is our next approaching storm. And it is one of the realest of realities. You think that this is real. This is not real. It's beyond this. You can die fool all you want to. Thinking you're going to get by with what you're doing. You're wrong. Proceeding on in Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to do all that the Abba has commanded me as I've taught you that you should do so. Again, Asa, perform what he says in the land which you shall go possess. He tells them to Shema, to guard as with the hedge of thorn, to keep therefore. And again, he used the word do. He said, for this is your hukma, this is your wisdom. When we do what Yah says, that's wisdom. When we don't do, when we don't perform what he says, we know that we have no wisdom. This is the identity of our wisdom when we do what Yah says. When we are so fast to anger, we should not be so fast to anger. Anger rests in the bosom of a fool. This is our wisdom when we do what Yah says. He says, and not only that, but you'll be in all your discerning, your understanding. This is your wisdom, your understanding. What? In the sight of all the nations. This is how the nations will know that you are. The Torah calls us a a special, peculiar people. It calls us a sugula. A sugula. Sugula. A people that is different. A people that their beauty, what they exemplify, what they present is far different than the heathen nations. In hell we look like them, we act like them. We walk like them, we talk like them. We dress like them. We carry on wicked like them. I don't want to do that, y'all. Oh, song says, let the works I do speak for me. Oh, let the works of the Torah I do speak for me. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing he's going to speak for us. That's the only thing, Israel. You can pretend. You think because I'm nice to people, your niceness... It's not worth a bowl of cow's puke. I'd rather have the cow's puke. At least I can put that on the garden. Your kindness doesn't mean a damn thing. All of your ways seem right unto you, but it's going to bring death. No love for Yah. No love for Torah. We're not going in with some kind of a serenading of some popsicle teachings. That never, that, that never indicts us uh, and shows us the fallacies of our own hearts. That's why men can talk all the time. They don't show each other the fallacies of one another's heart. I preach hard like this all the time. I don't care who it's to. I talk like this all. That's the way I talk. As far as my flesh that dwelleth 
No excellent thing. No tough thing. Nothing in us is tough. Well, I was good to do it. There's only one that is tough. Unless you have the power of the witness of your shoe in you, you, you do nothing that is tough. He commands us to keep them. That they shall be our sign in the sight of the nations. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this is a great nation. Not because uh, your skin is black. Not because your skin is white. Not because it is melata. Not because what the world has called your hair nappy. Your hair is beautiful, daughters. You're so damn silly you can't appreciate your beauty. Your hair is straight and knotted. That's not what God says. God says here, he says, uh, he says, in the sight of the nations which shall hear of the statutes. Not hear that you're the sons of Abraham. Not knowing that you are the seed of Yisrael. They shall hear of the wisdom of the things that proceed out of you. That's what he said. That's the constitution. He says, this is a part of the aggregate of Yah that form characteristics and character of his kingdom in us. He said, when, which shall hear of all these statutes, when they hear, when they shemach, when they hear, when they hear, when they hear, not when they read, not when they see you, when they hear, when they hear of your binar, your understanding, your discerning, when they hear of your chukhmah, the wisdom, your skill, uh, and, and your mind being prepared to battle the forces of hell. Uh, when they hear of your da'at, your understanding uh, of great knowledge uh, of Torah, when they hear, 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 not when they see, when they hear, when they hear, when they hear, when they hear of these things, the word says, surely, this great nation, this Am Ravata, this nation within the nation, and all heathen nations are of the composition of a nation. And there's a nation that is against Yah. They shall say, surely this Am Ravata. They said they are surely a people that is Hacham. They're wise. A wise people. They have wisdom. They are people that's learned it. They're people that's shrewd with the wisdom of Yah. We're not hearing that about the nation of the promises of Yah and Abraham. We're not shrewd, we're crude and wicked, but we're not shrewd. We're not skillful warriors. We're little boys and little girls that like toys. You give a child a toy, I don't care what it is, they, they enjoy it. I don't care what it is. We've lost that innocence, haven't we? I said to Syria this morning, she said, oh, puppy. I said, uh, she said, I want to see your watch you're going to wear. I said, uh, what kind of watch are you going to wear? She said, you need a white or a black. No, she said, you need a brown or a black. I said, I don't know about the black thing. I'll go with the brown thing. She said, either way, it's, it's all right. So she, you know, I got these watches. I changed my watch band on. So she goes in my drawer and she says, this is it right here. I said, what? I said, I don't know about the white one there. Let, let me go with the brown one. She's out there with well, the blue one. That, well, she, she, see what she has on? She got white shoes and blue in her dress and yellow. See, she, she could see the picture of herself this morning. So she said, you put on that? I said, okay, baby girl, I would take the brown band off. What about this one? I said, gold is yellow. See, she got yellow in her dress. She said, okay, that, that'll work. That will work. I said, all right. So I got the one with the yellow band. No, I'm not sporting no white band, all right? Uh-uh. See our innocence and her sincerity? She was excited. She took great platitude and 
assisted me. We are not that way. The making of a great nation. Hallelujah. A great nation. When they shall hear of the greatness of this nation, they shall say, surely this is a great nation. And then they will say, not only it is a great nation, and a wise, a learned people that shrewd uh, uh, and, and have wisdom. And they said, this is a people of great understanding. They can discern. They know that I'm crooked. They know what is right. And there's only one way that our ayan can be opened. That's by knowledge of Torah. That's why the elderly men, they must be sober and vigilant. And they must be wise. You can't be wise if you're, you, you, you like folly. You can't be wise, oh man, if, you, if you're always angry and the least little thing. You can't be wise, mothers. The smallest and the trivial thing uh, upset you. You're not wise. You're not wise, man. When that father rests in your bosom, you, you know you maintain it because you constantly, we do it all the time. He also says, for what nation there is so great? Because they all got dreadlocks? Because the skin is white. No white man. The false analogy. Ah, stop it, people. Free to deal with truth. He made man. And every man does it the same way. He sits down to relieve himself. If he stands up, he's like a bull then. They all urinate the same. They all got to chew food the same. And above all, they all die. You get no privilege in death. You get no privilege in death. I shall. People are afraid to talk like that because there's something in their damn wicked hearts. I'm not afraid. And they will say there's a nation that is so great who has the sovereign master so corrupt, so high. The one that enters in to them. Yah enters into us. As Yah Arabah is in all things uh, that we call upon Him for all things. That's what we call upon. We call upon Him because He's great. And the nation is great because we have a constitution. America says, quote, we're great because of our constitution. Our forefathers. That's what they say. And every nation, fledgling nation, they always get together to draw up a constitution, don't they? And it doesn't last long. It doesn't stand long. The Arabic Spring, Misraim, drop a constitution and hell, they're raising hell today. Afghanistan, they bombed those little babies and killed them. These greedy bastards here. And they drew up a constitution. It has no strength, does it? There's only one constitution. This constitution in America is a damn lie. There's only one. There's only one that creates a great nation. And we have not allowed this constitution to constitute us. We have not, Yisra'ya. What nation is there so great? Look at this now. That has these great huchim, or the great statues, and the great judgment so righteous, so sadiq, as all this Torah. See, that's what makes us righteous, is the Torah. It is the living Torah. It is the power of the witness of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is It is the living power of Torah. It is the living testimony of the Edah, the Eduth of Yah, that proceeds out of us. And when we speak, we speak with authority. We don't speak like a fledgling little boy. Naha! Well, with no strength and no character. The prophetess, Ayon, they're beautiful. And their walk is beautiful. Their talk is beautiful. Not like some silly little girl. This world has made you all ugly. All of us. Ugly. Unattractive. Made you women. Your daughters of Tizayon. You women of the diaspora. Hate yourself so it's sad. It's sad you hate you the way I love me. If my skin was black as that coat. 
He must have been a hat on. That's all right. I always wanted to be black like that. I wanted to be black. So black, that was blue. There was a song back in the days of the 60s. About writer, his name was, uh, what's his name? Curtis Mayfield. There was a song called this. You're the people that are blacker than blue. Oh, look at us. I was telling my friend here, we were out yesterday. I said, you know, there are things that I hear back in the 60s. I say, when I hear things, or even with the wicked music, you're in places you hear things. That's just a fact. I say, it doesn't make me think of some sexual, unclean activity. It makes me think of the beauty of the community, the friendship, the wonderful activities, the beautiful days. Sometimes there are days that you have the same order, the same sense of it was in the 60s. And it brings me back to that not going to some party, not getting drunk, but just the simplicity of life and the beauty of it. The camaraderie and the friendship. I love the 60s. I love them. I say, it makes me think of that. Not some girlfriend. I say, we had girlfriend, but we weren't doing no do. We just had girlfriends. I was telling about this girl I went to school with that she was what they call one of them high yellow. High yellow girl. That's what that song talks about too, high yellow girl. And, and, and she was in the seventh grade, so the boys in ninth grade liked her. She was high yellow. So I saw her some years later, and her mouth was so rude. I was at the bank in Arrowwood working there. And she got upset with the tailor, so she jumps out of the car and comes in the bank, and she was loud as they come. But I looked at her, I looked at her, I hadn't seen her. I was 20-some years old. This is an educated woman, college degree and all. I said, how are you doing? So, how are you doing? Of course, I, I don't give women no play like that. So then I saw her years later. Your, your presence is much more mature. You, you have the balance and the strength of a mature man. Then all of a sudden, they want to get close to you. Stop it. I never forgot that day the way you talked to that woman in the bank. I forgot that. And so all of a sudden, all of that which when she was young was a, 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 it, it was the image of beauty. And now it's, she looked a mess. Then I saw some time out there and I'm like, girl, what's wrong with you? And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Now, you, you can't get close to me. No, you forget that. Hallelujah. So it's not that, so the world has made you despise yourself and hate you and angry with you. And you ought to be angry with this wicked, unclean world. It is not a beautiful world. Hallelujah. We're in the world, but we're not of this wicked world, Yisrael. Yeah, we're in it, but we're not of it uh, at all. Now, we are people with great judgment, great sadiqa, and, and we get it from the Torah, which he has set before us this day. Now, this word he used, he used the word rach. Only, let nothing else. Only. Do you hear that? Rach. Precisely what I've commanded. When he used the word rach, he is, the word only is emphasizing, isn't it? So that's what it means in the language. It, it means to put emphasis on one thing. He says only, 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 only rach. Exclusively extensively uh, he says take uh, heed watch him uh, take heed to yourself you take heed to yourself you take heed to yourself take heed to yourself uh, and he tells us the shema he says keep your nafesh diligently uh, with me uh, with great power with great force uh, with great observation uh, we must keep ourselves diligently why uh, he says unless unless you forget. Unless you shall cut. Ignore. Like one driving on the highway and they ignore 55. Well, I don't know if it's 55. I can do 60. I'm not doing 65 or 75. I'll get there in the same time. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to drive 95. I don't even, I don't even feel comfortable driving 75, 85. If it's 70, I, I, I can't get right at 70, 72. And I get over in that lane because they're driving like fools. And I can just sit there and just roll. And of course, you get down the highway and they stop and you say, oh, that, there they are. I'm here. Huh. 
He says, take heed to yourself. Only. Rak. Only take heed to yourself. Only you, my friend. Only take heed to yourself. Why? Unless you forget to keep yourself and watch yourself. He says, and then you forget. You ignore. You forget the things which your eyes have seen. At least you Depart from those things, uh, and they depart from your love all the days of your life. Uh, he said, but teach them to your sons, and your sons' sons, and they must teach them. You have to teach them. We that are the older men among Israel, we must teach the young men. Elderly women don't ever be discouraged. I don't care what young women say, you still teach them. You teach them. I don't give a damn what the attitude is. Uh, why do you say that? Because let me ask you something, mothers, talking to you all for my, You don't have to answer me. You tell me you have babies that are this high and this high and like that. You instruct them and they, don't, they do not develop an attitude, do they? All right then. That answers the question, doesn't it? Okay then. Okay. That answers the question. There's one little one here that frequently visit me and, and, and sometimes I can thump a little head. I'm not talking against it, but I won't let you all know who I'm talking about. And she can be a little fruitcake, too. She can. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I said, look at me. Look at my eyes. Now, don't be silly. Y'all tells you to look at you, and you don't even look at you. I'm not offended because that's a child. Now, you don't put a tie down to the stake and beat her. As a child, don't be silly. Did he not tell us to take heed to ourselves? At least we forget. And yet we forget, don't we? We forget how to entertain one another. We're strangers to each other because we have become gay. Because we don't have the great love for each other like we should. So don't be silly. We're very ruthless with children. We think, oh, look at that beat. Why would you want to beat that in them? Y'all doesn't beat that in you. And we fail. We come short. Sometimes, every day. All right then. So if they come short, that's all right. The same way you mature, they'll mature. If you think you got this great breath of maturity, they'll get that too, all right? Don't be silly. No, you correct the child. But don't be a fool, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, at least you forget them, depart from them. He said, but you must teach them to your son and your son's son. The making of a great nation. I'm not going to finish this today. I know I'm going to finish it next week. But I, I want to give you another witness to this, the making of a great nation. The destruction, the demolition, and the creation of the God. I'm going to make it all tie and don't worry about it. Hallelujah. There's a writing here that Yah speaks in his own voice. And he speaks of this Am Rav Atta, a great nation within the nation. And he tells Yisraya this in the book of Bereshit. Listen. He speaks to his beloved father of a nation. He says, seeing, understanding, Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty Osum. A nation without number numerically, a great and a mighty nation. Not some, and all the nations of the earth, all the nations of creation shall receive the berakhah, the blessing of Abraham. He shall become. So you tell me that's in the time of the millennium reign? You are silly. It is a now word. It is no to the people of Yah. It's not something uh, that's going to happen uh, in the millennium. It's no. The Torah is a no constitution. Uh, we see your show. We truly see him. Uh, we began to tear down and dismantle all of this damn corrupted in our minds. Uh, when we see him, we see the power of his emulation. We will imitate him. We will see him like he is because we will be just like him. 
This is not something for over yonder way. This is a now truth. It is a now. And the zero of Abraham is a blessing to all nations. And that's just a fact. And so we got this teaching. I don't even call them teachings, these theses of lies. You got a little young boy here that's been raised by his mama. He's effeminate. He has no strength. Don't listen to no man. Well, boy, why would I listen to you, boy? Don't trust no man. Oh, you silly little boy. And they are wrestling the Torah of Yah. They're twisting it. They're perverting it. And they lead captive. They go into the houses of silly women. And they, uh, when the word woman, it doesn't just have the ramification of a woman, an issue, but it is this religious conscience. That's why men, when they find little silly boys and women find little silly girls, they like them. They like to draw to them people that are silly. But they don't want to deal with someone that is mature, that will reprove their folly and their silliness. I want to be around, I want to be around strong men. I don't want to be around weak men. And if a weak man is around me, I shut his mouth. No, you be quiet, man. I want to be around strong men. I want to be around strong men because they will make me strong. You're not going to be an excellent basketball player unless you play with somebody that can thump you. You need somebody that can thump you. You need somebody that can ride you to the rim. I remember the days after the Shabbat we will have this probably close to 20 years ago, probably longer than that. These young guys, I was young. These, these young men here, they, they, weren't even, they weren't even court material. They couldn't even get on the court. Huh? Nah, he couldn't get on the court. He wasn't even allowed. Love you. That was just some raggedy ball when we just let them on. But the thoroughbreds and the horses, we played. Hmm? We played ball. Had a group coming in one day, the man picked the ball and threw. I said, what's wrong with you, man? He said, man, y'all got to slow it down. No, we play basketball, man. And so what we would do after playing ball, Shimmery and all them fools that were with us, they were fast. Shimmery, man, he was like a, he can run. The boy's fast as a rocket. We got on the track and we lined up. I knew I couldn't beat the one of them. I knew that. But believe me, I'm running with the horses. I knew I'm coming in last. I didn't care about coming in last. I did not care. But we had the thoroughbreds, the hams, the bushes, all of them. And old Malcolm, Malcolm I, could, I could just about beat him, but I knew the rest of the boys. I could, but the rest, the, they were thoroughbreds. They were thoroughbreds. Start out, there, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh-uh, you started too fast. Started right, come back. So let's start over. No, 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 no. I, I'm looking for the smallest, minute advantage for me. I had no advantage. None. Oh, you think they stopped because they preach a man, say, slow down, let me win. I didn't want them to do that. I want them to run like monsters because it made me run. I knew I couldn't win. And I just want to catch up with them so when they look back, I'm crossing the line too. That's all I, I, I didn't care. I knew I was going to lose. These are the, these young Blood, they couldn't even fit in the race, all right? They were not even a part of that. And so we would go to the track back there, especially when we would play on the first day on Sunday. We would play ball to about one. Let's go run. Go to the track field. I ran track at that school. When I was in junior high school, that's why I ran track at that same school. And so we would get on the blocks. I knew who was in first. I'm trying to figure how far behind I'm going to be. That's all right. I didn't care about losing. I knew I was going to lose. I knew it, son. That wasn't an issue. I could have prayed all day. I'm still coming in last. I could have fell on my face. Oh, yeah, please let me come in second. No, you're going to come in last. They had the fuel, the youth, and the strength, and they were much faster than me. So my exhilaration came because I knew I could finish with them. I wasn't ashamed because I came in last. I knew who was coming for Shimmery. Then the other boys, they fighting for second, and they would be neck and neck. And I'm about this far behind all of them. I don't mind. Maybe that far. I don't mind. I'm running with everything. I'm trying to get my form right, my hands. I had to make sure my hands were right. I was, man. Oh, I know how to run now. I said I could scratch it out. I can scratch it out. 
But I knew I wasn't going to stretch it out with them, so I'm running. And my objection, my objective is to catch them. I knew I wasn't going to catch them, but that's all right. So I caught them once we passed the finish line. Because after we all finished, we all were right in the same huddle. <sighs> Man, let's do it again. Come on, let's walk back down. Every time you know where it came, and last, every single time, last, every single time, only one that I could beat, he didn't have much, hallelujah, but the thoroughbreds, that's all right, so we all don't have the same magnitude and the same measure of strength and wisdom, we may think we don't, that's why we don't listen to nobody, that's why we don't hear nobody, that's why we don't want to hear nobody. Because we all think I'm a man like you, but then you're not much of a man if you're a man like me. You're a boy. I got what you got, but then that let me know, that lets me know you don't have a damn thing. I want to establish something here before I close the day, all right? It's beautiful weather, mama. Can't catch no fish in this weather. Forget about that. The shimmery symbiote said she didn't catch it one today. I said, you know, when I used to go fishing all the time, I would, I would always look at that fishing report. I would somewhat basically follow that. I always come out on Thursday and observe that. Hmm? And I would buy me a book to tell me when the best time of fishing according to the moon. And most of the time, you pan out all right. If I saw it's going to be a bad day, I said, no, I'm not going. I can do something else. I want to establish this before I close today, all right? Hallelujah. This is Yah's promise, a great nation, a great people. When nations see our, our attitude toward Yah and toward his people, the wisdom of that attitude, then they will say, this is a blessed people. And you will bless them by your presence. It doesn't mean you have to give them some material thing. You just, there's a lady in the bank, she says, every time I see this name, it just... Makes me smile. Is glad to see that someone is using the name. Well, I, I didn't engage with that woman in conversation. How many would do? Well, you know, we're going to talk about Yah and show you Yah the name of Yah. Yah so sweet, isn't it? No, I didn't do that. I just said, I didn't say anything. I said, okay. Smile somewhat. That's all I did. That's it. But this is a generation has to always prove. There's only one thing that we have to prove this. Where the nation will say we are great. We are mighty people. There, are, there is a people of the multiples of skin pigmentation and the color. That's what it is. I'm going to show us the range of the people of the diaspora. That we call Israel and where they travel from. And show you the routes of all the slave ships and all of that. I will show you as far as the reach where they were sent to the Baltic it's amazing that here in Brazil, there were more people of the dark hue of skin of the diaspora were sent there than America. But yet those in this country call themselves Hebrews. They are the tribe of Yahuda. I would think that that would be the tribe of Yahuda down there. I would think that would be the tribe of Yahuda down there. Don't write me, little boys. Write you a letter. Don't write me. Don't waste my time. When they write me like that, I send their letters back. I say, read it, you little boy. I want to establish this. The making of a great nation. The destruction. And the creation of the gods. This concept. Where does it, does it begin? You see, the constitution of Yah brings about a great greatness of a people. It produces a people that's identified it produces a people that has a great light and a great wisdom. It produces a strong man. So when he walks in the places, people look and they wonder, who is this man? Who is this woman? She doesn't look like the rest of the women. She is assured of herself. You don't have to try to be fly and filly. You don't have to fly and filly. You, Achim, you don't have to try to be fly, fly and filly. I don't want to be fly and filly. Your daughters don't have to try to be fly and filly. You dress beautiful and simple. Hallelujah. 
And said to my it sure is. I like the material she had on. I like the color of it. That's my favorite color, teal. Make me a little patch, handkerchief. And I'm quite sure she'll tell me that's I didn't have but enough. You better have a little piece for me. And we don't want to do that. We're inspired by the world, the way they dress silly and crazy. I'll take you anywhere. I'll take you to the ball of President Barack Hussein Obama. He's not going to invite me, but that's all right. And she will get more looks than anyone there. This is how we think of ourselves. We think very little of ourselves. I don't. I'm bold and I'm bodacious and I'm a man. You understand? That's what I am. How much money you got broke? Don't have a dime. May have sixty dollars over there, but that ain't mine. I'm busted. I'm broke. As they come, that's fact. That's the truth. Who we'll established this? Who we'll established this concept of the God mind? Yah is not a God. I said, damn every God, every Lord. Yes, damn your Baptist God. Damn your Methodist God. Damn your dirty white God. Damn your dirty black God. Damn your Jew God. Damn your Mexican God. Damn all gods. Damn them all. Damn your dirty white Jesus. And your damn black Jesus. And your damn Mexican Jesus. And your damn Jew Jesus. Damn them. How about that? It takes a brazen man. That is assured to say that. I'm not afraid to say it. Damn this God of this. Of the heavens above. I exalt my Abba, Almighty Yah. Listen to this. Hallelujah. I want to give us a witness of what shall be as the prophet Shaul speaks, as he speaks of the blindness that shall come upon this kingdom. First of all, we have forgotten. We have not taking heed to ourselves. When we're in conversation with others, are we talking about them and against them or about us? It's easy to point out my fallacies, isn't it? Tell me yours. Tell me you are a liar. Tell me how corrupt you are. Tell me how stinking you are. We don't do that. Are you supposed to confess your faults one to another? And then that will develop some fervent righteous prayer. It's always him and she and them. Tell me about your damn wickedness. You folks uh, don't think you, you come here, you're going to find something that's going to appease you. You love Yah, you'll be happy with me. You don't, you won't give a damn about me. And I don't have no problem with that. I have brothers and a sister, and they didn't give a damn about me. So what do I care about that? And that's just the truth. I don't care how people feel or what you think of me. I will not waste my energy on your immature attitude or your perception of me. You think I'm going to waste a little bit of time I got in my life trying to confront your imagination, your image of me, or what I am, or your stereotypical concept or thought of me, no, you can forget that. You can. I frankly don't give a damn. It says in the book of Bereshit, listen to this. Now this is the voice of Hashatan talking. And this is how he talks to us. What talks to us? Everything that speaks to you comes from your betim. When the Torah talks about the betim, your belly, it talks about the appetite. And your appetite is developed here, isn't it? But it satisfies this, doesn't it? Your appetite is here, but it satisfies that. So we're speaking of that which comes from the betim. The betim. The belly. The seat of pleasing and pleasure and the appetite. And so here this thief of darkness, his main desire is to steal the tefireth, the great honor, the esteem, uh, the magnificent beauty of Almighty God. That's what he has done with the women. And that's what he's done with the men today. That's what they're effeminate and soft. It's a mean and mad and soft. 
He doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he's effeminate. If he doesn't bust his wife's out of the head, he's a fool. And he's not even an effeminate man. When a man hits his wife, he's not even an effeminate man. It takes not even a weak man to go upside of a woman's head. I said it again, it takes not even, he's not even a fag as far as I'm concerned. Man that will hit his wife like that, come on, I don't care who you are. He's not even a faggot. He's not even a gay fag to do that. You're weak. Because this woman, no way she can handle me. One shot, I stop her breath. Just one. Boom. Nothing she can do. Nothing. Just one. She's done. One shot to the jaw. Break all of that. Twist it from here to there. Why would I do that? Oh, you get quiet on me. I'm not going to do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Can't do that. I would be too ashamed to do that. Break a jaw, what happened? Oh, she's got a lot for me. Women do it all the time. They do it all the time. They do it all the time. That's not a man. That's not even a boy. Because little boys, they will kind of somewhat. Uh, I see what uh, that means, Sipora. He will let Sipora kind of crack his head over there. But he's not going to let old Sarah yeah. He... Come on, Sippy. Hit me. Hit me hard as you can. Sarah yeah. He's not going to do anything. He's all cream puff. The voice that speaks from the better. Hashatan says. He says, for Yad does Yada. Better sheet is found. Listen to it. He says, for Yad does Yada. He used the word no. Yada. He knows every aspect of it. Every detail of it. For Yad does know that the day that you eat. The day that you defy. The day that you do not eat the lechem, the bread of Torah. The day that you eat thereof. He said, then your eyes, your ayin, your mental, your spiritual perception will be open. The fountain that flows through you, he says, your ayin will be open. He says, and you shall be as gods. This is the strength of every god. Let no one get you. I want to establish this today before I continue next week. I want this to be pronounced profoundly. He said, for the day that you defy Yah and eat of that, uh, he said, there shall be a fountain of spring. Yeshua says that they that believe on me, like the Torah says, uh, out of the bottom, out of the belly, shall flow rivers uh, of living water. He says, the day that you defy Yah, the day that you denounce Torah, the day that you establish your own Torah, you shall become as the God kingdom. You shall become as gods. That's why even the Torah tells us uh, that we are gods. Doesn't mean you're God because you have. Uh, because you have, that doesn't mean that God has supernatural power. We were taught in the law of this damnable thing we call Christian armor or whatever form of fashion it was. Well, he is the big God. He is the great God. You are like every God is a damn dog. And all gods have the same power. I don't care if a man is that tall, he's still a man. He has a similitude. If he's that tall, he's still a man. I don't care if he's that tall, I don't care if he's that tall, he's still a man. His attributes are the same. I don't care if a woman is that taller or that taller, that, or taller than that. She's still a woman. So God is a God is a God. A God is a God is a God. A God is a God is a God. Well, our God is spelled with the big G or the capital G. With that language is uh, whereby every letter is capital. What God are you talking about? In the Hebraic language, they all capital or block letters uh, or curse it. In the Arabic language, it's that way. In the Ethiopic, it's that way. It's only in this damnable, confused language that we think, well, see, our God is a, a God is a God. 
Thor is just as mighty as Jesus. Thor is just as mighty. The God Mercury is just as mighty as Jesus. The black Jesus is just as mighty as the white Jesus. The Mexican Jesus is just as mighty as the Korean Jesus. There's none like y'all. Who is like y'all. So gods are dirty. He did not say you will become as the most high. He said you will become as gods. How will I know I'm God? He said you will know the difference between Tav and Ra. What is right and what is wrong. We're a generation that's doing right in what in our own eyes. In our own sight, are we not doing that? We're a generation that's doing what we think is right. We're doing what we know is right. The day you defy Yah, you will become as a God. You will be a God. Knowing the difference between tough and evil. I want to close with this verse here. I want to show you something. You see, everything must, in Torah, must line up with the prophets. Must line up with the wisdom of, of Mishli, of the Mashal, of Solomo, Shalomo, and it must identify Yahshua. I'm going to close with this. I want to continue on this next week, Shah's will. Who knows what will change? But I, I want to continue on this. I don't want to add too much because I want us to understand. You don't add the ingredients in the cake too fast. You gotta, there's some cakes you make, you've got to fold it at the right time. Talk to me. You've got to fold it at the right time. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. You can't put it in before time. A certain thing's got to get to a certain temperature, then they fold it in. You mess that thing up every time it's going to turn out wrong. I heard a man say one day, he said, man, somebody tell me how to make some, 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 uh, some, some, some uh, hot water cornbread. Woman said, you make it just like it says. One man said, no, you got to add eggs. And she said, that ain't no hot water cornbread. It's just what it is. Get some cornmeal and some hot water. You don't need nothing else. Well, I put butter on it. She said, well, then you're making cornbread. He asked how to make some hot water cornbread. You just put water in it. I said, that's making it. I said, they're not even here with this silly woman. Is saying, but she was right. Hot water cornbread. All right. Fried it. She said, you put all, yeah. She said, listen, if you want to make some cornbread, you put the butter and all of that. You can put milk and all that and you want to. If you put milk in it, you want some milk cornbread. She so put hot water. You get you some hot water. You got to add it in when it's right. How much oil you use? Why you don't use that much oil? Just fry it. Put a little oil in that pan in the black skillet and fry it. You see, there's certain things if you don't put the right proper ingredients at the same time. And we are people that we must have the proper ingredients for this time. You understand? We must have the power of this testimony. And so everybody was... Trying to express how to make hot water cornbread. She was the only one that said, that's how you make it. Just put hot water in it. Well, what about eggs? Got to hold it together. She said, the water is going to hold it together. No need no eggs to hold that together. Fry it. If you want to make some cornbread, you put your milk in it. Put your little sugar, butter, whatever you want to. Put it in the oven. You want some fried hot water, some hot water cornbread? It's expressed itself. Hot water and cornmeal. Make some bread. So everything has to be in its proper place, right? You got to put the ingredients in. You got to fold the eggs in just right now. You can't make them. I mm. don't even want to talk about them. Them cinnamon rolls and just you got that, that, that technique got to be right. You got to put that. You got to put that sugar in right. You got to put that cinnamon in right. You can't. You put too much cinnamon in something. It's gonna taste a mess. You put the right amount of cinnamon. Ah, uh, you you can't overdo with the sugar, but you can't too much overdo it, huh? <laughs> Sweet. All right. Don't overdo the sugar. I close with this for today. This is what the concept of the making of the God. This is this is a dismantle. This is how the Torah is dismantled in our hearts. This is what we do. And the Nobi the prophet. We we'll close from Yeshai. Listen to this. He said, Woe to them that call evil tough. Hashatan says, He said, David, you become a God. You can establish your own good. Oh, I know I'm good. You see the word good? It's the German language, good. 
that says I'm a God. I don't like the word good. They're words I don't even use. They're not even a part of my vernacular. Not that I will not use them, but I don't use them in the expression of Omar Yah and his kingdom power. And so uh, he says, the day you say to Yah, I don't give a damn what you say. I don't care what the Torah says. I establish my own right. And then you began as the prophet say, woe to them that call evil tov and tov evil. And then they put the darkness of their own mind for light. What is light? The Torah. He says, for the mitzvah is a lamp. Is it not? That's what Shalomo says. He says, for the commandments of Yah, it is a lamp. He says, and the Torah is light. It is ma'or. A reproof of instruction is the way of life. That's what he says, right? Sure he does. He said, and that they put darkness for light. They, they love the dark things. They love the lies of the belly instead of the light of the Torah. And light for darkness. And they put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Then he says, warn to them that are wise. Where are you? In their own eyes. And prudent in their own phoneme. You see, that's what the God does. Make you wise in your own eyes. And make you think you're wise and wiser. See, in your own eyes, you look at you, boy, I'm so smart. I'm an ignorant man. This is a generation that tries to dismantle Torah. So you got the Baptist religion and the Methodist religion and the Pentecostal and the apostolic whore. And the seven day Adventists and all of these whores and prostitutes. There's only one truth. And that is Imetcha, the truth. Torah, the Torah is truth. His Sadiq is an everlasting Sadiq. And his Torah is truth. May the riches of your rest upon you all. In your sure mighty name, Ag Lester, I hope you're listening. If you're listening, email me. I just want to know how you're doing. Just let me know how you're doing. I know that sometimes. He is incapacitated. So please, email me, Ark Lester there in Chicago. Please let me know how you're doing. I just want to know how you're doing. Nothing else, my friend. Just let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you feel and how things are going. Please, my friend, I need to hear from you. We greet you all that have joined us, our friends, our listeners. You that reject me, that's all right. They rejected Yahshua. So I'm not offended because men reject me and denounce me and speak evil of me. I, I'm not offended at that. I'm not going to try to defend me. I'm nothing to defend. I am nothing to defend. Me defending me is a waste of time. You that have joined us and listened, send a gift and offering, send your tithes. You don't let these liars tell you, how in the world do we pay for this? You that are watching us, how do we pay for it? This is a stingy generation. The world doesn't even think like that. They're going in the Walmart, they're going to buy what Mr. Mart has there. Yet we are people, we're stingy. We got money to do everything we want to do. I need a piece of equipment. It's going to cost around $100. Someone sent me that. It's a little, it is a, I've already found it. It is a, it is, it is a camera projector. I want to be able to do teachings and project that onto the stream when I teach. I need that because there's some things that I must point out and show you, Yisraya. I need that. That is a cheap one, all right? The ones that cost, it cost a little money. But that will be sufficient for now because there's some things, some teachings I want to do with graphics and to show you. I want to show you. No, I'm not a scholar. I'm not that. I'm a simple man that will teach you simple truth. And I'm not going to try to butter it up or refine it in a way that it, it causes you to be appeased with it or make you like it. I don't care whether you like it or not. And that's just a fact. Now someone send me the money to do that, all right? There are, we have quite a few of y'all listening. And there are you that will not send one damn dime. It's a shame. I don't have money. You got internet, you got money. Quit eating the cookies and cakes. That's right. Don't go to Walmart this week. It's amazing, isn't it? And T.D. Jakes asked for a million now. And they were sitting there. This faggot dog down here in Atlanta raping their sons and they're giving them a stack of bills. And you damn false folks call yourself Hebrews. 
This is not done free. It costs money. You think this line, that visual line is up, they give us that free? You think those T1 lines is nothing? Stop it. Don't be silly. We have no conscience of I agree with it. This is a generation that extorts. I wanted to say this before Isaac Cain dismiss us. We have a book binding machine. I looked at it years ago. Yah blessed us. If I call the individual's name out who sent the money, he will get on me. Believe me. He will really get on me. And I'm not going to do that. So he asked me one day, what would it cost Re'ak to get the machine? Well, Aksimeon and I looked at it years ago. Well, when, when I looked at it again, it was double that price. It was. And this is a small machine that will buy 500 pages at a time. It's not something like you're going to have some reproduction that you're going to do hundreds of books at a time. He said, I'll send the money by Thursday. He sent the money. I took every dime for that. Well, his offering that other month was equal to the offering what he sent for that. And I took that. And then we were able to pay for that machine. And so we have refines, especially the book of Yesha. Aksimeyon made some in the past. He gave me one. I have a copy. And he painstakingly did that by hand. But it's a fabulous book. The name and all of that is in there. I was thinking, I said, I can put this online to the people and they would want it free. They can't go to Amazon Books and get it free. They won't even send an offering to the free cause. Uh, that's the mindset of this generation. They would not send one damn dime. They would not help. They don't give a damn. So when the folks from Africa, we send, all, we send material all over the world. That's just the truth. Yabin knows. He knows that. We send it to the continent of Africa, Philippines, Canada, all over, Middle East. You got to be careful when you send it there because, you know, th- there may be retribution. To the islands, all over the United States. And 99.9% of the people that ask for something never send a nickel. They don't give a damn. They don't care. They don't give a damn about nobody. Now, I'm not going to stop talking like this. And they think it's free. They come here just like that silly little couple came last week. You don't show no love. You silly little boy. You think we're going to stop and everybody just gather around you. We love you. That's the kind of boy he was. He had no maturity. Go to hell, boy. Didn't give us one dime. And by the way, he left some gifts here and I threw them in the trash. The rest in the fire. I don't want. You think I received something from someone like that? I threw it away. I threw it away. I threw it all in the fire and threw it away. He's a boy. And I told him to his face, you are immature. I said, you're the Nakwe. That's who he was. Silly little. Nakwe was silly. He left his computers, all of his birth certificate. I was going to get y'all being one day, try to get in touch with somebody to find out how we can get that to him. The only thing he had to do is send me a box UPS. We will pack it and send it out. I'm not going to pay for it. And there were those that thought he had something. Nakwe was a nut. He had a mental deficiency. That's just a fact. He had been to the mental institution. I said, don't let them tell you nutty. If he'd have stayed around me, he would, he would not have been identified as nutty. Because I put something in the boy. Put some backbone in him. Made him strong as a young man. Had someone to show him what a father is. I'm not trying to abuse nobody. But it's a sad shame that people will listen and will not. Come on, that's wrong of you all to do that. Send an offering. Send a thousand dollars you can. There's a precious Akka then. I won't call his name because I'm, he's a very quiet brother. When he sent offerings, he doesn't send 10 or $20. He sent offerings. And he sent large offerings. And he's not a wealthy man. But his heart is moved by this word. There's a hope there in California. She sent offerings. She sent offerings. They sent offerings. Just a few people. And it's just flat out wrong. You help. If this bless you, then you help. Sustain it. Sustain it. Give an offering. Send your tithe. These are liars. They say tithes is done away with. Because in the same book of Melchiah, Yah says, I will curse you because you have not given honor to my name. You curse already, you Kohim. Are they cursed? Sure, they curse. And the same thing when they don't bring their offerings and gifts into Yah's house. You cannot run a house off. But how do you pay the electric bill? I'm not going to beg you. No, you don't send. You can send offerings. Send your tithes here. They're liars. 
And that's just a fact. Now I can see if it was going to some kind of superstitious lifestyle. It's not. I live simple. I live real. You understand? They don't think how what it costs for all these booklets we set out. And we got, I don't know how many booklets we got. We can't put them all out there because it takes money for copier and paper and ink. When y'all be sending me there, I'm like, man, stop it. He got so he just sent me a letter and said, and he got a list all pinpointed. I'm like, need paper, need ink, ink for that machine. No, no, no. How much is that? No, it's not $20. Not $30. You don't get that for that. It costs. And the people listen, they have no sense of shame. Their homes are blessed. They hear. It gives strength to their homes. Witness and integrity and testimony. You're not, you go to the internet and find all of them at drugstore profits. You want CVS. They're not saying anything. It has no substance. No conviction. You can be a dirty whore and sit before them and you're not bothered with it. You can be a flaming faggot. and they, I don't care what the fags are doing. They're not bothering me. I know that's y'all's will that they're fags. Because they have not received the love of the truth. So I, I'm not, I'm not, you think I'm going to sit up here and teach on that filth? I'm not going to waste y'all's time with that. I want to teach you. It's our sins that offend him. May the riches of God rest him. Come on, our Zachary. God bless you all, our friends. And you, our enemies, you that have joined us, our enemies, listen now. Believe me, they listen to me. Yah, enrich you all in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 We do totally Yahweh for all you that listen by V of Live Stream. Those that are listening by the small radio station we have here at Teshua Community. Let us take heed unto the word of Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. Yahweh has reigned upon the house today. And what ground, hard ground does... When the abundance of rain fall, the rain runs off. So let's allow the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to till our hearts, our minds, that we allow the word of Yahweh to part, and that is just simply we allow it to settle in, that we can use it efficiently, that when it is needed, the roots of our Ahava, our love for Yahweh, can root into that, and we can receive the nourishment that it takes for us to grow in Yahshua HaMashiach. So let this teaching today, let it rest in our bosom and our love so. Next week, Yahweh is willing, when it continues, we can just pick off right where we left off, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he is tough, and his mercy they endureth forever, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand, let us shub, let us turn towards Yisrael. And while we are here on this earth, this is what we should do as we offer a palah unto Almighty Yah. Almighty Yahweh, we told you for another day you have given us this Shabbaton. We have all gathered here in the Bayat where your name is written, Yah, in your name that we may receive of your Torah, your truth, your Hava, and your love, Abba Yahweh. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, you will touch Israel, Yah, those that are scattered throughout the Olam, Abba Yahweh. You will provide that which is needed for your house today. And all things we do give you, Toda, take those that have traveled Yahweh home safely through the rains, the slick highways, Abba Yahweh, that your Malat, your Melikim, We'll be a camp around Kol Yisrael, and all things we do give you Toda. In the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Kol Yisrael, hallelujah.